Friends, this event is one of the most important events going on in Britain at the moment because it brings together people of different religions and even different political opinions and it brings them together as a way of finding peace. And uh, I have 10 grandchildren. I have Indian grandchildren, Muslim grandchildren, and you see, the younger generation, this younger generation, is the first generation in human history that has the technology to destroy the human race. That has never, ever been true before. You could kill one man with a bow and arrow, another man with a bayonet, with a gun, with a rifle, with a bomb, but with chemical, nuclear, and biological weapons, it is possible for the human race to be destroyed. And in those circumstances, the desire for peace becomes the most important in the world, the campaigning for peace. And if I may say this, I believe it is a criminal thing for anyone to suggest to anybody else that their God wants them to kill somebody who worships another God. Because if that happens, there will be no peace in the world. And that is the danger that we're in at the moment. When Bush said God told him to go into Iraq, that was not only a lie because God does not have an office in the White House, but also it was a dangerous thing to say. And if you look at the world and the teachings of the great founders of the world's religions, they all taught the same thing. All the prophets, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha was a prophet, they all taught us to treat other people as we want to be treated ourselves. And that is the basis of the religious teaching of all great founders of the world's religions. Now, of course, the culture of religions differs, the prayers differ, the buildings differ, the priests differ, but that message is the right message. My mother taught me as a child, we used to read the Bible every night. She said to me, the stories in the Bible are of the conflict between the kings who had power and the prophets who preached righteousness. And I was taught, she taught me to support the prophets against the kings because there are some people who use religion to control us, to frighten us, to make us want to fight people. And that is not what the prophets taught. They all taught us the same thing. And when you look at the world in which we live, there are, there are the dangers I mentioned, but there is something else as well. There is enough money and enough skill to solve the problems of the human race. That's never been true before. The Americans are spending $400 million a day in the war in uh, Iraq. And there are people starving in Haiti, in Somalia, in Ethiopia. And it is a crime to use the skills that we have been given in order, uh, in such a way as to deny other people what they need to have. So you see, this conference, this Global Peace and Unity event, is an event that brings us together. And if we look together, what, everybody wants the same thing. Everybody wants a home to live in, a good home. Everyone wants useful work to do. Everybody wants health care, so that if they're ill, they're looked after. Everybody wants to be uh, looked after when they're old. And all the money we waste on nuclear weapons and weapons and so on, all that is doing is making the situation more dangerous. So I believe that we are engaged, if you know what I uh, understand what I say, we are engaged in a common mission to use the resources of the world, the people of the world, the land of the world, the oil, the copper, to use those resources in order to improve the conditions for the human race. And if we do that, there is nothing we could not achieve. And that does mean we have to respect each other's faith. Maybe uh, 
uh, a Muslim wedding is different from a Christian wedding or a Jewish funeral is different, but I don't feel threatened by other people's culture at all. Indeed, a part of the enrichment of our civilization is that so much has come to us from all the different religions of the world, Islamic science, Islamic literature, Islamic art, Islamic architecture, tremendous importance. It is something we should regard as our own, even if we're not Muslims. And similarly, everybody should look at everybody else and take pride in what they have achieved. Now, this is a difficult period in history because with economic problems, there is always a danger that racism will come back. Hitler came to power in Germany in the 1930s when I was alive, remember it very, very well. When there was mass unemployment, Hitler said it's all due to the Jews and the communists and the trade unionists. And Hitler said, give me power and I will give you jobs. And he did, and you know what he did. He took half the Germans who were unemployed and put them into arms factories, and the other half he put in the army, and we had another war. And 105 million people died in two world wars in Europe. And now with atomic weapons, my God, if we have a war with that, then we are really witnessing the end of civilization. I went to Hiroshima once, and the most impressive thing I saw there was very simple. I was taken round by a guide and we passed along a road and there was a mark on the pavement, just a little mark. And I said, why do you show me that? And the guide said, this is where a child was sitting when the atomic bomb dropped. And that child was vaporized by the bomb. The child just disappeared. And next to it was a twisted metal lunchbox that had belonged to the child. And what the atomic bomb had done to wipe away the child and leave this twisted metal box as a reminder of what the bomb could do. There is no question whatever that if Moses or Jesus or Mohammed or uh, Buddha or any of the great religious leaders were with us today, they would be supporting this event. They would realize how important it is. And so none of us are abandoning our own faith if we work with people of other faiths we are reinforcing what all the great religious leaders taught us. And that is our job. And it's amazing to me that uh, at a time when people are trying to whip up hatred of Muslims and blaming Muslims for what's going on, it is amazing that here in London, we should have people together in such numbers, pledging their support for those who hold different religious beliefs. So I'm very honored to be here, I'm very proud to be here, and I shall go away from this meeting inspired to believe that we can overcome these problems and that there are millions of people of all religions in this country and all over the world who share that view. Good luck, thank you for asking me, peace be upon you.